Welcome back everyone to the final round of the US Chess Championship in St. Louis. We have a three-way tie heading into this final round between Hikaru Nakamura, Fabiano Caruana and Linear Dominguez. So this means that all three of them will be playing for a win. In this game, Nakamura faces Jeffrey Shong with the black pieces. Without further ado, let's dive into this game. So Jeffrey opens with d4. Nakamura plays f5 the Dutch defense, which makes a lot of sense since he wants to play for a win. And we see the main line Leningrad Dutch, where both sides fianchetto their bishops. So here castles from both sides, d6, so black wants to play e5 in this position. Knight c3, knight c6 again supporting e5, so white stops that momentarily with the move d5. So knight comes to a5, queen to d3 is the main line, simply protecting the pawn on c4, but here Jeffrey goes b3, so just protecting the pawn and intending to fianchetto his bishop. And this line has tremendous success for white, because black responded with knight to e4 a majority of the time. White is of course hoping for this, he would gladly capture the knight, allowing bishop takes a1. But here knight e to g5 gives white great compensation by playing for the e6 square. If the bishop drops back knight to d4, then one of these horses will land on e6, unless of course black gives up his dark square bishop, which is almost suicidal since it severely weakens his dark squares. And if instead of bishop g7, if h6, this would severely weaken the king as well. So knight to e4 isn't that great. Nakamura played c5. So Nakamura goes for a plan which is quite common against the Marazzi bind. Here we have bishop b2. This is now a pretty rare position with only 8 games in the database. Nakamura goes a6, so now intending to break with b5 at some point. So previously a4 has been played with good results. So it stops the move b5, but it does have the drawback of weakening the b3 pawn, which can be hit immediately with queen b6. So another move that can be tried in this position, this move is actually suggested by my engine, is the move e3. So this has actually never been played before, but it does make a lot of sense. Why the simply freeing up e2 square for the knight with hopes of uh, playing for this e6 square, with the knight coming to f4 and the other knight coming to g5. So in the game, we see the move knight to g5 from Jeffrey. Rook to b8 was played by Hikaru, so aiming for b5. I feel that white's plan isn't very clear in this position. Jeffrey goes queen to d3, so that stops b5 for the moment. And now queen to e8, so renewing the threat. Jeffrey has no way of stopping this, so he decides to shore up the c4 pawn with his knight, knight d1. Now b5, queen to d2, so meeting the immediate threat of b takes c4, this comes with tempo on the knight. So knight back to b7, and knight to e3, so giving extra protection to c4. White's position isn't bad by any means, but his plans are not obvious in this position. Meanwhile, Hikaru's plan is very clear. He goes knight to d8, simply improving his mis uh, misplaced knight. Nakamura hopes to challenge the knight on g5 with knight to f7. Here, knight to h3 played and bishop to d7. So Hikaru has a few pawn breaks in this position. e6 is one of them. There is also the possibility of going b4 a5, a4, this is another pawn break. White, on the other hand, doesn't have a decent pawn break. e4 is one of them, could be a possibility, but this is still miles away with this knight being on e3. In this position, Jeffrey played rook a to d1. So I believe that this was an inaccuracy from Jeffrey. 
it was important for the rook to remain on a1 and rook a to d1 was probably played in anticipation of a future break with e6 where white would then have pressure on the d6 pawn but Jeffrey could have used the other rook. Nakamura pounces on this inaccuracy with the move b4 so had Jeffrey played the other rook to d1 now b4 is met with a3 and this would be good for white because after a5 pawn takes pawn takes white would have control of the open a file but instead we have rook a to d1 Hikaru goes b4 Jeffrey plays queen to c2 so maybe anticipating knight to e4 and this is the part of the game where Nakamura really shows his class he plays a5 Jeffrey goes knight f4, so he wants to stop e6, but Hikaru isn't so concerned about that. Hikaru plays a4, so another pawn break. h4 from Jeffrey, he wants to keep the knight on f4, but you can tell that white is running out of ideas. Rook a to a8 from Nakamura, so preparing to take control if the a file opens up. Jeffrey played queen to b1, so potentially stopping any penetrations with the rook. Rook to a6, so Hikaru keeps things very flexible. He protects the d6 pawn, which keeps the options open for an e6 break. Bishop f3 from white, so Jeffrey tries to organize a pawn break with e4. So while e6 is possible in this position, this would free up the position a bit for Nakamura, but this does give white some chances because he can play bishop takes f6 and stick the knight on d5. So we have a change of plans from Hikaru. He goes queen to f7. Hikaru correctly judged that this was the more practical approach. Black wants to keep his center closed and aims to exchange some pieces. So with the hopes of gaining control of the a1 h8 diagonal, Jeffrey played knight e to g2. So perhaps he could have withheld from playing knight e to g2 immediately and first play rook f to e1. So this would perhaps have given white better chances after knight g4 Bishop takes g7, queen takes g7, because here he can capture with the knight and play bishop e4 with some kingside pressure, although black is probably still preferred. But instead we see knight e to g2, knight g4 from Nakamura, so now white can only capture with the bishop. We have bishop takes g4, so Jeffrey can of course choose to leave the knight there, but this gives black the possibility of knight e5 in the future, so he decides to capture. So here e4 from Jeffrey, bishop takes b2, queen takes b2, and queen to g7, which was the whole point behind queen to f7. So now queen takes g7, the queen exchange is kind of forced because if white tries to avoid it, say queen d2, this allows black to freely take control of the diagonal and this would be disastrous after pawn captures, pawn captures rook a3 attacking the pawn and here white cannot challenge black on the open a file, black's play is very simple just bring the knight to f7 and to e5, the other rook is coming to double on the a file, black has a very comfortable edge, so here queen takes g7 King takes g7 and e5 from Jeffrey, so seeking counterplay on the e file and also threatening e6, which would nullify the bishop. So we have bishop to f5 from Hikaru. So now e takes d6, e takes d6, rook f to e1, grabbing the open file, knight f7, rook e7, king to f6, unpinning. So it doesn't seem like white's counterplay will amount to much. So here rook b7 from Jeffrey. 
The computer gives the best defense, as rook to e6 check, giving up the exchange. So let's just briefly take a look at this line. So here knight d5, king g7. If king takes e6, there's knight c7, which would pick up the rook. So king g7, now e7, rook c8, knight to c7, and if the knight is taken, then e8 queen. So maybe Jeffrey had seen this, but who knows what's going on in this position. This would have to be calculated thoroughly, as black has some tricks, for example. He can play a takes b3, and if knight takes a6, b takes a2, and these pawns can't be stopped in this position. But I feel that this is a bit unrealistic to expect in a game. Rook to e6, so let's just go back. Rook b7. So now the tension was resolved. A takes b3. And here Nakamura simply doubled on the a file. And this is decisive. It also helps that white's rooks are split in this position. So we have knight to e3. Rook to a1. So if rook takes a1, so black has many wins here, but rook b1 is probably the simplest, just going after the b3 pawn. And if king g2, bishop e4 check, forces f3. Because if king h2, then rook h1 is mate. So after f3, g takes f3, this is winning for white. So. White has some background problems, so he plays king to f1. Knight to e5, the knight joins in the action. Note that the h7 pawn is poisoned because of rook takes. Rook takes d1. Again, white is weak on the back rank. So here king e2, unpinning and defending the knight. And now knight to f3 forms a mating net, for example, if knight e6. Bishop c2 wins the knight because if the knight moves, then rook e1 is mate. So in this position, rook takes a1 plate. King to e2, knight to f3. So white's king is in danger. Mate threaten now on e1 as the bishop covers the d3 square. So here Jeffrey captured the bishop. Black has to be a bit careful as well because if he plays g takes f5, this runs into knight h5 check. And if king e5, king e3, and it's now black who is in danger, rook e7 checkmate is threatened. So black has to give perpetual. With rook e1, king d3, rook d1, king e3, and so on. And if instead of king e5, if king g6, knight f4, so if king to f6, then knight back to h5. And if king h6, rook b6, and d6 drops. So here Nakamura played king takes f5. King to e3. So once again, h7 is poison if Instead of king e3, rook takes h7. Now king comes in, threatening mate on e1, and if rook e7 check, the king simply steps aside. Rook e1 checkmate is still a threat. So if knight to e6, king to, e, uh, king to c3, king e3, and now king takes b3 wins. So if instead of knight to e6 check, if knight g2 trying to defend e1, simply rook g1, and this nets a piece. If rook to if knight to f4, then rook to e1 is mate. So here we have king to e3 from Jeffrey, rook to e1 check, and Nakamura's piece activity proves to be overwhelming king to d3. So I'm not going to go too much into the details here. Let's just watch how Nakamura converts his advantage. So knight to e5 check, 
king to d2, rook to a1. So now aiming for rook to a3. Knight to e6. So rook to a3 right away is good, but Nakamura plays h6. Rook to b6, so white will eventually win the, b, uh, win the d6 pawn, but here the b3 pawn is crucial for white. So rook to a3 was played by Nakamura, and if rook takes d6, then rook takes b3. Let's just look at a possible line. So here rook has to move to avoid uh, the knight fork. Black is going to capture anyway, and after, for example, king c2, rook c3, king d1, b3, knight takes, b2, and there's no way to stop the pawn. So here, Jeffrey defended b3 with king c2. We have rook a2 check, king d1, the king is now forced to the back rank, knight d3, Rook takes d6, white wins the pawn, and it's now up material, but black's pieces are way too active. And with the white king being so helpless, this is losing for Jeffrey. So Nakamura played knight takes f2. King to e1, knight d3 check. King back to d1, king comes in. Knight c7, knight f2 check. King to e1, king d3. So this plans to force the king towards the king's side. We have rook takes g6, knight to e4, so threatening mate. Jeffrey has to move the king, king f1, knight takes g3 from Hikaru, wins back the pawn. Both sides have passed pawns, but white doesn't have the luxury of pushing it due to his endangered king. So we see king g1, king to e1, would run into the move rookie to check. And after king d1, knight to e4, with the threat of playing knight c3 check and rook c2, this is pretty tough to stop. So king to g1, knight to e2 check, king to h1, so here if king to f1, I think Hikaru was intending to go king e3 with the idea of playing king f3 to support this pawn, and this would also threaten mate. So we see in the game king to h1, king to e3 from Hikaru. So here Jeffrey plays rook f6, trying to cut off the king, but black's advantage is now overwhelming. He plays rook a1 check, king g2, rook g1, and now he pushes the pawn. Rook h1 check, and in this position, Jeffrey shown resign after king to g4, g2, and promotion is unstoppable. So Hikaru really showed his experience in this game against his younger opponent, and this final round victory puts him in clear first as Dominguez and Caruana both drew their respective games. Therefore, Hikaru Nakamura is the 2019 US champion, so congratulations to him. I hope you enjoyed the game, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching and have a great day.